to be talking about hypothesis tests for population proportion. Notice the symbol for population proportion is a P. P sub zero is a number in H zero. That's your null hypothesis. And P is equal to the number. Recall on the null, we always use equal. N is the number of trials. X is the number of successes. And P hat, which is your sample proportion, is X divided by N. We do have some requirements. The sample must be obtained by simple random sampling or the data come from, from a randomized experiment. Okay, then you have N times P naught times one minus P naught, the quantity is greater than or equal to 10. The sample values are independent and the sample size is no more than 5% of the population size. Okay, our critical values come from the Z chart or we can use our graphing calculator. And the test statistic and p-value come from the calculator. So let's look at the first one. A marketing manager for a cell phone company claims that more than 35% of all children aged 10 to 11 have cell phones. Okay, so we have more than 35%. In a survey of 5,000 children aged 10 to 11, 1,805 had cell phones. Test the manager's claim using alpha equal to 0 0.01. So let's get a little bit of information here. So we want to know n is equal to 5,000. And x is equal to 1,805. Okay, your null hypothesis is p is equal to 0 0.35. 35% is 0 0.35. He wants to claim more. More is greater. P is greater than 0.35. Your alpha is 0 0.01. So either from the table or from the calculator, Z of 0 0.01 is equal to 2.33. All right. So. Next, we want to find the test statistic. The test statistic is Z equal to 1.631. And our picture looks like this. Okay. The um, test statistic here is at 1.631. And our Z score, our critical value, is 2.33. More than shades to the right. And you can clearly see that our test statistic is outside of the rejection region. So we know right now it's a do not reject. But let's consider our p-value. Our p-value is 0 0.0515. Now, how do we tell if we reject or do not reject? Well, based on the p-value, 0 0.0515 is that less than alpha. Is that less than our alpha? which is 0 0.01. So this is a no, so we do not reject. But we already knew that because the test statistic is outside of the critical value. So the shaded area is your rejection region. That's where you reject HO. So the non-shaded area is do not reject. So the conclusion is there is not sufficient evidence to conclude to we can conclude or use conclude or to support the claim that more than 35% of all children aged 10 to 11 have cell phones. Okay. 
Next example. In the year 2000, 58% of females aged 15 years or older lived alone. So 58%. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, Census Bureau a sociologist tests whether this percentage is different today by conducting a random sample of 500 females 15 or older and finds that 285 are living alone. Is there sufficient evidence at alpha equal to 0 0.10 to conclude that the proportion has changed since 2000? Okay, we have some information again. So mu is equal to 0.58. Your n is 500. The x is 285. Alpha is equal to 0.10. And different means not equal to. So we're going to test mu is not equal to 0.58. So when we have a not equal to, that is a two-tail test. So what we have is we have z is equal to plus or minus 1.645. So when we draw our picture here, we have two tails. So you have negative 1.645, positive 1.645. Oh, okay, I put that in the wrong spot. That is the critical values. Let me correct that. Okay, so our critical values are plus or minus 1.645. Those either come off. The table, or you can also find it using inverse norm on the calculator. All right, your test statistic Z using a calculator is negative 0.45. And again, if I graph it, negative 0.45, I'm going to put TS here. Uh, you can see it's in the do not reject. Well, let's look at our alpha, comparing it to P. So you have 0.6505. So how do you tell, is P less than alpha? The answer is no. And again, I rejected it. I actually knew from my picture that it's a do not reject. There is not sufficient evidence to support the claim. Or we could say to uh, conclude, because I use the word conclude, conclude that the proportion has changed since 2000. All right. In 1990, it was reported that 47% of households had a gun. 47%. In a survey conducted by the Gallup organization in the year 2000, 395 adults said they had a gun. Is there sufficient evidence to support the claim that the proportion of households that have a gun has decreased since 1990? Okay, so we have 395 out of 1,012 adults. So n is equal to 1,012. x is equal to 395. Your null hypothesis is mu is equal to 0 0.47. Decreased is less than. Okay, your alpha is 0 0.05. Critical value is going to be a one-tail test. It's going to be negative 1.645. Your test statistic is negative 5.08 if we round. So in our picture, here's our test, our critical value here first, negative 1.645. So negative 5 is actually in the shaded region. So we know it's going to reject. Right now, we automatically can say reject HO. But again, let's look at our PVAP. 
Our p-value is 1.9 times 10 to the negative 7. So the question is, is 1.9 times 10 to the negative 7 less than 0 0.05? Our answer is yes, but let's review. That's scientific notation. So I'm going to move my decimal seven places to the left. So it looks like this. 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Give me six zeros. One, nine. Definitely less than 0 0.05. Because I would approximate that as about zero. So I reject. So there is sufficient evidence. to support the claim that the proportion of households that have a gun has decreased. There is sufficient evidence to support the claim that the proportion of households that have a gun has decreased. Okay, so there's also the confidence interval. We've actually looked at using the picture that's the classical hypothesis testing. We could also compare the p-value is p less than alpha. And then we can also perform a two-tail test using a confidence interval. Now, please notice it has to be a two-tail test. Okay, so let's look at an example. So this uh, example here with H not being p equal 0.12 and H1 uh, not p not being equal to 0.12 at the alpha equal 0.05 level. That information is going to be used in both A and B. Okay, so if the 95% confidence interval estimate of P is 0.08 comma 0.16, what's our decision? All right, so here's what we need to do. The question is, is 0.12 inside or outside that? So you have 0.08 here. Let's draw a picture. 0.16 here. So the question is, where do we graph 0.12? Well, that's going to be in the middle of this. If your um, Population P is included in the interval. Okay, you cannot reject HO. So here P is equal to P naught. So we do not reject HO. And it's because Okay, so it's because that's in the interval. So we could write it a couple ways. We could use an inequality, but let's say because 0.12 is in the interval, point oh eight, point sixteen. All right, part B. If the 95% confidence Interval estimate of P is 0.13 to 0.19. What should we make? So again, let's graph it just to have a visual. Okay, now you can see 0.12 is outside of it. So that's a reject because 0.12 is not in the interval. Our confidence interval estimate. So we'll say it's not in the interval. Here. There we go. But please remember this can only be done for a two tail test. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to just look at practical significance versus statistical significance. Okay, so practical significance refers to the idea that while small differences between the 
statistic and parameter stated in the null hypothesis are statistically significant, the difference may not be large enough to cause concern or to be considered important. So what happens is if we have large sample sizes, they often lead to results that are statistically significant, yet not practically significant. So you need to go and to work some problems on the hypothesis test for population proportion. Have a great day.